This is an introduction to exercise 13b on conditional probability and independence. So the idea of conditional probability, I'm not sure if you guys have done it before, but the ideas are saying, what is the probability of something happening? And the key words that we use in most exams is given that something has already occurred. So you can see here, for example, probability of A given B. So for example, if I'm and the classic example of picking marbles out of a bag that no one does anymore, but what's the probability of picking out a red marble given that the first marble was blue or something like that, right? So we use a very specific formula and very specific notation, which is this one right here. The probability of A given B, so you guys remember the straight line down, same as when we say uh, graphing and setting a domain. Uh, we say A given B using the line is the probability of A intersecting with B, so where they overlap, divided by the probability of B. Now, of course, this is implying or assuming that probability of B does not equal to zero. Of course, it makes sense, right? The probability of B can't equal to zero, otherwise you get some undefined value. The formula can be rearranged, if you would like to, to say that the probability of A intersecting with B is the same as probability of A given B multiplied by probability of B. Any questions about that so far? Okay. Now, two events being independent, similar to our understanding of independent variables, is if the probability of one event occurring is the same no matter whether one other event has happened or not. So for example, the, the probability that someone in America eats cheese and the probability that someone in Victoria gets married, right? They're two independent events because they have no relation. It's not like if you eat cheese in America, you get married in Victoria, of course. A couple of things, uh, a couple of formulas to write down. I shouldn't say formulas, key points to write down. If two events are independent, it must tick off the th following three points. The probability, of A, I should write an arrow here, the probability of A given B must equal to the probability of A. As I mentioned, the probability of A given B does not care about B if it's independent. So it's just the probability of A. The probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B. Pretty straightforward, same idea. And the probability of A intersecting with B is the same as a probability of A, that's not A, multiplied by the probability of B. So in our coin flips, the coin flip example from before, is the coin flip independent? Yeah, it is. Because just because you flip a heads doesn't mean the next one's going to be a tails. Right? Which is why, you know when people... <laughs> This is one of my Mr. Lamb rants again. You know when people are like, oh, we've had two boys. The next one has to be a girl. You know, have you guys heard that before? No? Well, they're independent events. So it's not like if you have two boys, the next one has to be a girl. It's still the same probability that you get a boy anyway. Just saying. Anyway, that's my Mr. Lamb rant for the day. So those are your rules. You have to tick those off in order for, them, for it to be independent. Or if the question says prove it's independent, you would use these points here. I'm going to jump straight to an example that involves the use of conditional uh, probability. So in this situation, it says in a certain town, the probability that it rains on any Monday is 0.21. I'm going to very quickly start by defining my variable and say that let m equal to Monday rain, which is a very poetic album name, if I'm being honest. Uh, and the next, if I read down, it says Tuesday, it rains on a Tuesday. So I'm going to write t equals Tuesday rain. There we go. Great, I'm going to whip out my highlighter. Uh, probability that it rains on any Monday is 0 0.21. If it rains on a Monday, <clears throat> and it says if it rains on a Monday, then the probability that it rains on a Tuesday is 0 0.83. If you want to reword that, you could say that the probability that it rains on a Tuesday, given that it's rained on Monday, is 0 0.83. So think about that terminology. If it does not rain on a Monday, then the probability of rain is 0 0.83. 3 on a Tuesday. 
for the given week, find the probability that it rains, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, <clears throat> apologies, I'm losing my voice. Uh, from here, I would strongly recommend, because it's a sequential, dependent, or conditional probability where one thing has happened, therefore this has changed, blah, blah, blah. I recommend using a tree diagram, because then you see the individual events. This one's pretty small, it's only two days. Uh, I'm going to draw it over here. So, I'm going to start with this, going from there to there. Of course, our first day is Monday, and it either rains or doesn't. And then afterwards, if it's a Monday, and it rains, it can rain on a Tuesday. But it also not rain on a Tuesday. And then, here... Same situation, after it doesn't rain on a Monday, it could either, could either rain or not rain. And that depends on the gods and what they want. So, let's start by filling in the lines, or values for those lines. What's the probability that it rains on a Monday, Keely? Uh, Good, 0 0.21. If it says that it rains 0 0.21 on a Monday, Daniel, what's the probability that it doesn't rain on the Monday? 0 0.79, good, because it either rains or doesn't, that should be a total of 1. What's the probability that it rains on a Tuesday if, it, given that, I should use the terminology, given that it rains on the Monday, Sophie? So what's the second bit of information? If it rains on a Monday, what's the probability that it rains on a Tuesday? Good, 0 0.83, and inversely, of course, what's the probability that it doesn't rain on the Tuesday? Because it either rains or doesn't, right? Yeah, 0 0.21. 1, 7? Because it should add up to 1 for these ones, oh. right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to add in a little thing that you don't have to, but this is just for me to explain the next concept. that I'm setting up the next concept later on. So just like how I've been using the words given that, uh, for the probability that it rains on a Tuesday, given that it rains on the Monday, given that it rains on the Monday, given that it doesn't rain on the Monday, and given that it doesn't rain on the Monday. Okay. I'm going to keep going. The probability, and it says the last bit over here, the probability if it doesn't, given that it doesn't rain on the Monday, the probability that it rains on Tuesday is 0 0.3. 0 0.3 there. And of course, that means that this one here will be 0 0.7 because it either rains or doesn't on Tuesday. Okay. Done with that. Let's look at the first question now. Find the probability that it rains on both Monday and Tuesday. Now, I know by looking at this, okay, I'm saying the probability that it rains on a Monday is 0 0.21. The probability that it rains on the Tuesday after that is 0 0.83. Do I just add them together? Multiply, Multiply good, because it rains on the Monday and Tuesday. And imply intersection. So the probability that it rains on the Monday intersecting with Tuesday equals, oh, I should write that below, equals 0 0.21 multiplied by 0 0.83, which gives us an answer of 0 0.1743. Of course, just use a calculator for that one. Don't do that in your head. Any questions? Okay. On Tuesday, probability that it rains on Tuesday. Now, the probability that it rains on the Tuesday is not just the probability that it rains on a Monday and a Tuesday. It's also when it doesn't rain on the Monday, but also on the Tuesday. So it's the probability of T intersecting with M plus the probability of T intersecting with M dash. So the probability that, on, that it rains on a Tuesday and, and on a Monday plus the probability that it rains on a Tuesday and not on the Monday. They're both raining on the Tuesday, so that still works. Uh, using this, I'm actually going to move that down so we don't get that confused. There we go. All right, uh, gives us a value of 0 0.1743, which is from above, because the intersection of M and T is the same as T and M, plus the probability that it doesn't, uh, sorry, that it rains on the Tuesday but not the Monday, we can get by multiplying our values which ends up with a value of 0 0.237. I'll leave you guys to do that calculation yourself. And then gives us an answer of 0 0.4113.
Now, what we've done is actually what we call the law of total probability. I write, I'll write the formula out. I recommend you write it somewhere as a formula. Uh, but this, just know that this is what we've already applied. The law of total probability tells us the probability of A equals the probability of A given B multiplied by the probability of B plus the probability of A dash, sorry, my apologies, A given B dash, there we go, times by the probability of B dash. We've already applied that formula. So the probability of T intersecting with M, that's where they're both occurring, both reigning, multiplied by the probability of B, which in, is in our calculations, plus the probability of A given B dash, multiplied by the probability of B dash, which in our case would be Tuesday, not raining. Any questions? Okay.